Today, we explore the Shaman, which in the TGT meta is pretty much a worse version of Paladin, but considering Paladin is probably number one, Shaman isn't that badly off. They're worse, they're better, but the two classes work a lot the same, with Totemic Call kind of matching Silverhand Recruit, and just the class cards are a little bit worse, probably. But they actually share much the same playstyle, where Inspire is pretty good for Shaman because they have a hero power which can also generally be used whenever and is generally good. We start off with three Shaman class cards. Lava Burst is... A bit of a worse fireball, but it's still a good card. Uh, it just turns out they're better. Drainic Totem Carver is also a pretty good card. If I were to pick between Lava Burst and Drainic Totem Carver uh, on the first pick, I would probably pick Drainic Totem Carver. I think it edges it out just a bit. But even better than both of those is Thunder Bluff Valiant, uh, which is very similar to Quartermaster in Paladin. Uh, you want to play it on turn 7, just like Quartermaster. You play the card, you make a totem, and at the very worst, you're going to get a 3-6 plus, on average, a 0-2, so that's like a 3-8. And then you get a buff, so that's like a 5-8, so 7 mana 5-8. That's not bad. You have the flexibility of playing it as a 5 mana 3-6, and hopefully you actually have two totems out, in which case you're getting a lot of value. And if this sticks on the board, you win. Uh, just good stuff all around. And it's one of the few cards that have Inspire that you can play, which can stick around because of the 6 health. A clear pick for Worgen Infiltrator here. It is a 1 mana, 1 health minion, but it does have stealth, so very importantly you can play it early game and then go up in tempo because there will usually be a 3-2 to kill. Worth mentioning is that you should almost never attack with the Worgen Infiltrator until the opponent has something to trade the Worgen Infiltrator into. Uh, Mad Scientist is not good, it's 2 mana 2 2, Frigid Snowball isn't good, it's 4 mana 2 6. Worth mentioning that Shamans do usually make fairly good use of spell damage, but Frigid Snowball is still not good. Uh, especially before you've picked the spells. Tournament Medic is too slow, uh, the stats just aren't good enough because it has such a low attack that it has very low impact on the board. Reckless Rocketeer is 6 mana, deal 5 damage, and it's generally not bad, usually a slightly below average card. Urshak isn't as good in Arena as it is con in Constructed, there's not as important of things to silence, but still the best card out of these three. Uh, I personally think Urshak is about an average card. This pick features a great card, the Silverhand Knight. Uh, very solid for every class, pretty much. For 5 mana, you actually get 6-6, six, six, and it's relevant because the 2-2 two, two Squire usually doesn't suck that much. Uh, a lot of the neutral cards, which summon a card like Razorfin Hunter or Dragonly Mechanic, have the problem that it summons a 1 health minion to go with it, which is really easy to remove with a hero power, and Silverhand Knight Squire is at least a little durable. So it is going to be the pick here. Uh, that said, Maiden of the Lake... I find isn't that far off. I really like it with classes which are able to use a hero power freely, such as Shaman. Uh, I do think the Maiden is better than the Volcanic Drake, uh, but the Silverhand Knight does beat the two fairly handily. Uh, Volcanic Drake, by the way, I don't think is that good in Shaman, because it is difficult to engineer that many minions to die each turn. In fact, I don't think Volcanic Drake is that good in many of the classes. Perhaps an average card? Uh, in general. This pick has Argent Squire, which is not enough of an impact to use as a card, Torn Warrior, which is uh, horribly statted for its cost, and Mech Warper, which is 2 mana, 2, 3, which is about as good as we're going to get compared to the other two choices.
Darkness pick features Ancestral Knowledge, which is a worse Arcane Intellect, though when that's your only option, it's not bad to pick it. Uh, but compared to the Silverhand Regent, which is a card that I loved in Paladin and I also love in Shaman, uh, really good. At least it's a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, which is fine already. But if you play it on turn 5 and use a hero power with it, then you get a 5-mana 4-6, kind of. And it's a threat that has to be dealt with, otherwise you keep gaining the benefit. So Silverhand Regent, really good. Uh, Stormwind Knight is kind of okay. I put it at around the level of Ancestral Knowledge. But I pick Silverhand Regent highly here. In both Paladin and Shaman, Mukla's Champion is real good. I'd actually say it's even better in Shaman because your 1-1s in Paladin can already attack, but your 0-2 totems, when they become 1-3s, that's even better. So I will be picking Mukla's Champion, it's a great card. Unstable Ghoul is uh, below average in Shaman because of the friendly fire you usually hit on the totems. Not as bad as Paladin because your totems can generally survive the Unstable Ghoul. The Captured Gar is actually an average card and it's nice, but Mukla's Champion being above average is uh, good. And it kind of serves the same role as Thunder Bluff Valiant, so it's going to be important not to pick too many of these types of cards. I'd probably want to pick one more Mukla's Champion slash Thunder Bluff Valiant type card. So here is that Mukla's Champion, and this is a dilemma right here. Uh, it is up against a fairly good card, the Venture Co. Mercenary. Uh, on the other hand, I already have a good amount of fives. Uh, the Mukla's Champion isn't a five. The Thunder Bluff Valiant, though, is, and the Silverhand Knight is. Uh, Venture Co. Mercenary is a card I would consider good. Uh, Ancestral Healing is a complete joke, and we don't even consider it. I am going to choose the Mukla's Champion now. Uh, this does make cards like Bloodlust a lot worse. Also, by the way, Bloodlust is worse because cards like Mukla's Champion and Thunder Bluff Valiant exist, which are just better versions of Bloodlust in general because they serve the multi-purpose of also being a minion. So it's like an active threat as opposed to Bloodlust, which is just generally you need to have the board and then you win. Uh, with Mukla's Champion, at least, uh, if you just play it on an empty board and you summon a totem, at least it does stuff. So I'm going to choose it here and... The third Mukla's Champion would have to be up against, I'd say, an average-ish card for me to pick it, even though it's generally a good card. Here I will choose Anti-Killbot. Uh, rare for Shamans to get a healing source, so it is a little bit better in decks that don't have natural healing as much. Uh, especially when I compare it to Gadgets and Jouster, which I think is a poor card, and Nightblade, which is a poor card, because both of these stats are unreliable or low. And given that this is more of a control-oriented deck, in fact, most arena decks that you build tend to be focused on value in arena, uh, the Nightblade just isn't going to work. And this deck, we can already see, is highly focused on the end game because of the closers of Mukla's Champion and Thunderbluff Valiant. It's really rare in Arena for Shaman for Lava Shock to be good. It's usually just two, dam uh, two mana deal two damage, which isn't that great. Uh, rare to get so many overload cards that it is worth it. Uh, Sunwalker is, as always in all the classes, quite good. Draenei Totem Carver is average, slightly above average, but Sunwalker is just far above, so I'll pick the Sunwalker here. When Speaker suffers the problem that it is just a low stat minion, the effect is relevant. And when you put it on something, sometimes you get a two for one with it. You hit a low attack minion with high health, and then you hit a high attack minion with low health, and you kill both of them on the Wind Speaker card. The main problem with that is it requires you have a minion on the board already, which 
In Arena, that's usually dependent on whether or not you're winning to actually have a minion stick after it's your turn. Uh, turns out to not happen that often. Uh, Cogmaster is not good here. I do have two mechs, but it's still not good. Scarlet Crusader is just a great card by default. Usually takes out a card and then lives to either take out another card or it takes two of your opponent's mana to uh, fire blast it, in which case you have basically a one mana 3 1, which was guaranteed to hit a minion at least once. And that's pretty good. It's good. So now we can kind of see the setup. We have three cards which buff things in the late game already with two Mookless Champion and a Thunder Bluff Valiant. So Bloodlust is often going to be a repeat and just too much of the same thing. If I didn't have the two Mookless Champions and the Thunder Bluff Valiant, I would choose Bloodlust here. But in this case, it's too often going to be doing something that I already can do better. So I'm not going to pick it here. Even though the two other cards are not very good. Stoneskin Gargoyle is one of the worst commons in the game. So we're not going to pick it because it's 3 mana 1, 4. Uh, which leaves the Mogishin Warden, which is a pretty below average card. But I don't have any 4 drops yet. And does synergize at least a little bit with Mukla's Champion and that it can guard it. And I have no taunts other than Sunwalker yet. Uh, and I usually like to have like a few to have the option. The Mogishin Warden sucks, basically, but it's the Bloodlust is worse, given the context of this deck. There are two main things to think about when entering this pick. Uh, one would be, on paper, the Silverhand Knight is stronger than the Hungry Dragon on the basis of cost efficiency. Uh, but the other thing to look at is that we already have quite a few fives. But then one more other thing to look at is the fact that the two Mookless champions don't really count as fives. And we really only have Silverhand Knight and Thunderbluff Valiant. The Antique Killbot is kind of an optional five play as well. So kind of only two fives. But on the other hand, we don't actually have any fours other than Mogushin Warden, which is clearly not a four drop that you want to play. So in this pick... Uh, I'd say Sylvania Knight is a stronger pick, but because of mana curve reasons, Hungry Dragon is the better pick, and same reason as not choosing Bloodlust as the last one. I mean, we chose Mogushin Warden over Bloodlust the last pick, so of course we're going to pick a card that's better than Mogushin Warden over Bloodlust again, in this case the 4 drop. Here's kind of the shaman version of Shielded Minibot, uh, and perhaps one reason that shaman might have a slight advantage in this one specific field over paladins in the field of the Grand Tournament Arena meta, since the Grand Tournament cards are coming up more often, shamans get their Shielded Minibot more often. Uh, that is Totem Golem, and it's a great pick. Uh, certainly compared to Tournament Attendee, which is a 1 mana, 1 health minion, which is terrible, and Puddle Stomper, which is a 2-drop, which is uh, reasonable. Uh, the Totem Golem just outshines the Puddle Stomper. This pick has truly awful cards. Uh, you take a quick look through your arena deck list and note that there are no Death Rattles, so uh, we're not going to pick Undertaker, so it's between Thralmar, Farseer, and Goldshire Footman. Both cards are very low quality. Because of the Mukla's Champion synergy and the ability to drop a small minion, I think I'm going to choose the Goldshire Footman here over the Thralmar Farseer. Uh, also, I look at the curve a little bit, and it looks like at this point we have an above average amount of 3 drops. Uh, I mean, this is halfway in, and usually I would end up with like three or four, so we're on point. Uh, so I'm going to choose the Goldshire. This thing actually has potential to be played alongside something for like a clever play sometimes. Uh, this makes for two big bad taunts that I have. Well, I wouldn't call this big, but two bad taunts. I've got like the crew. Uh, these two cards, Mogushin Warden and Goldshire Footman, are usually newbie traps, but in this case, uh, the 
other cards are just bad enough. This is a three mana, two, three, just doesn't do enough. Here we basically match up a lot of vanilla minions against each other and find out which one is most efficient. Captured Dwarmengar is an average card, and it's alright, especially if you want more late game. In this deck, we're not looking for more late game, with two Mookless Champions and a Thunder Bluff Valiant already. Uh, so Pit Fighter is a really good card, uh, very strong. Compared to the Clockwork Knight, uh, there's not enough mechs to really justify this hitting very often, so Pit Fighter is just far better. Uh, the 6 health is a lot better than 5 health. Uh, it might look like just one number, but consider the matchups it has specifically at turn 5. Pretty much nothing will deal turn uh, deal 6 damage, so that makes Pit Fighter really strong, especially if you answer a turn 4, 4-5 four, with it, for example. This pick isn't obvious. Uh, first of all, it's not going to be Ancient Watcher, because it is near useless, unless you want to use an Earthshock on it, which is not a good idea. So it's between Sunwalker and Feral Spirit. If uh, this were the first pick of the game, uh, I would recommend choosing Sunwalker, because uh, the card is efficient and it's good. However, in this case, uh, because we already have several late game cards, and a Sunwalker already, and several taunts, in the case of Mogushin Warden and Goldshire Footman and Sunwalker. Uh, Feral Spirits is probably better to smooth out the early game. A small consideration is also given to having two Mookless Champions, so cards that split into two are better. Uh, for example, Silverhand Knight and Feral Spirit. Some classic cards here. Ironforge Rifleman is a traditionally weak card because it has weak stats and the effect isn't very big. Stranglethorn Tiger uh, is a classically slightly above average card. Uh, the 5 mana 5 5 stats are reasonable but the stealth is a good bonus. You get to be the one to dictate where it trades first and that's actually a fairly big advantage. The Iron for Grizzly is just a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. We've got 3 good 3 drops already, and the Grizzly is just outclassed by the Tiger. Uh, the Tiger isn't a high priority pick because we have a lot of 5s, but it is just strength-wise better than the others. Now we've got a similar pick to the pick with the Pit Fighter earlier here. Uh, we have just a 5 mana 5-5 five, five to compare it with, the mech isn't very relevant, the stone tusk boar is 1 mana deal 1 damage basically, and that's a very poor card, so we choose the spectral knight, which is not, uh, which is a good card, but in this deck we're really not looking for another 5 drop, but still just based off of the power level you pick spectral knight. Usually the decks that I build are not built around Joust in any way. However, in this case, there's been a constant theme of picking 5 drops. That actually makes the Joust mechanic pretty strong in this deck. Uh, I unfortunately have that Goldshire Footman dragging the deck's mana cost down, and sometimes I'll lose Joust. But Master Jouster turns out to be really good if you can win Joust. And with... Uh, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards that are 5 plus right now. That's going to be a pretty strong card. Uh, the Drainic Totem Carver would usually be the better pick here, but the deck is really encouraging Joust. And Light's Champion is just a 3 mana 4, 3. It's, it's not bad, it's a below average card, but sometimes you just pick it. Uh, so here it's the Master Jouster. Though, there is some slight consideration to... We only have two 4-drops, but that's not enough consideration, probably. This card is just really good in this deck. <laughs> 20 picks in, there is a major problem with this deck in that it has way too much late game, but 
kind of all the picks have been leading it in that direction. Uh, so I'm happy to see just a basic 2-mana two 3-2 three two here. Uh, Youthful Brewmaster is alright. It's not as good in Shaman because you usually don't want to pick up your totem and you're more likely to have stuff on the board, but it's just a good early gameplay. Uh, Dragonhawk Rider is poor in pretty much all decks, even though this class is one which likes inspire cards. It's just a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with a minor ability, not that useful. Ancestral Healing remains useless, or not a big enough effect to justify drafting it and drawing it and basically having it not be a strong draw. Glad to see this pick here. We've got three picks which are all fairly good, uh, but the Harvest Golem is the strongest one here just off of its durability. There's some small synergy with Mech Warper as well. Uh, we already have a Scarlet Crusader, but the Scarlet Crusader also would have been a fine pick. And the Razor Fin Hunter, even though it's the worst card here, uh, is not that bad because there are two Mookless Champions and it would be possible to do something like a late game Mookless Champion, Razor Fin Hunter, hero power and then buff a lot of things or play the razor fin hunter leading into a mookless champion the next turn and have a higher chance of buffing something and said the harvest golem is just a stronger card uh, comparing stat value So there was a major problem here in that uh, the deck was really top heavy. So now getting good choices for the lower parts, uh, specifically the four drop slot and the two drop slot is good. Dark Iron Dwarf is a great card in Shaman, one of the best cards, because there's usually totems that might hang around that you can buff. Whirling Zapomatic is a strong two drop, and we do only have four early game plays right now in Youthful Brewmaster, Totem Golem, Mech Warper, and Infiltrator. I would prefer in a class that can reasonably use their hero power on turn 2 to have still somewhere around 6, so it seems like in order to reach that criteria, the Whirling Zaphomatic would have to be picked. Uh, that said though, the Whirling Zaphomatic, while strong and while mech with the mech warper, uh, I also have to consider the fact that I have very few 4s, and I would feel bad about playing a Mogushin Warden on turn 4 generally. Uh, so I'm going to pick Dark Iron Dwarf, it's just the stronger card. I would love to pick both cards, but Dark Iron Dwarf is better. Silent Knight is arguably at around the same power level of Scarlet Crusader, and therefore it might even be better than Whirling Zapomatic, but in this case I would easily choose Whirling Zapomatic over Silent Knight, because the mana curve uh, really wants me to pick not a 3 and wants me to pick a 2. But I'm going to pick a 4. It wants me to pick 2s and 4s, and this is a really strong 4. Uh, Windspeaker is not a strong 4, Tournament Attendee is a bad card, and Lance Carrier is alright. Not really an independently good 2-drop that I'm looking for, but it does offer some interesting options, such as if I have a Goldshire Footman or a Worgen Infiltrator, the Lance Carrier can hit something early, and it is great with Shamans for the same reason as Dark Iron Dwarf usually can have. You have a higher chance of having a friendly mini Nurin. Uh, these last few picks have been really good for the deck, uh, having picked up the cards that I need uh, in the lower end of the curve, and this pick is the same. I don't want to pick Captured Jormungar. It's a fine card, and I think this is the third time I've seen it, but it's just not as good compared to the other two cards. I'd be happy choosing either one, but Totem Golem is the stronger card, and given how I really want to make sure that my two drops are impactful, I'm mean, just going to choose Totem Golem because it's a stronger play on turn two and just a good, efficient use of my mana. Uh, the deck isn't that aggressive, so the Whirling Zapomatic's Wind Fury is actually not very important as it turns out. It's just kind of a 2-mana 3-2 with a, with a bonus. The bonus looks big, but it's not that big in this deck. I look at my early game, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no, not Lance Carrier, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, skipping Lance Carrier, skipping Goldshire Footman because the card is just so not impactful, and skipping Earthshock because it's usually utility. 
I have five uh, early game plays, so it's really good to pick up the Rockbiter here, which is just a very efficient card. One mana, deal three damage. Uh, yes, you usually put it on yourself, and then you take some damage, but it's great removal. Uh, you use a one mana card to answer a two mana threat. That's efficient. The Wind Fury is basically a late game card, which uh, doesn't make sense in this deck where we're trying to win with uh, massive flooding at the end. Uh, so almost a useless card. Silver Hand Regent is a fine card. Uh, we already have enough three drops that we don't really want another, and we have enough five drops that we don't really want to play the Silver Hand Regent and make a guy. Uh, just Rockbiter is far better because we want an early game uh, removal, and even in the case where everything was about equal, Rockbiter is still better. Uh, this deck is really heating up at the end here. Uh, Booty Bay Bodyguard is a weak card. Uh, even a 4 mana 5 4 taunt isn't that great. But a 5 mana 5 4 taunt, meh. Ancestral Knowledge is an okay ish card draw card, uh, but we're not really looking for that in this deck. We have enough late game. Uh, what is really exciting is this Fire Guard Destroyer, a really high quality 4 drop. Uh, in a deck where we only have 3-4 drops still, so this is pretty much the perfect card to pick. Uh, I've got another Wind Fury, which is useless in this deck. The Fork Lightning is a nice pickup, nice utility, it's kind of okay, and it's kind of good actually. Uh, varies quite a bit. But in this deck, which has sticky minions such as Harvest Golem and uh, low attack, high health minions such as Feral Spirit and Mogushin Warden, it's uh, easier to control the Fork Lightning. So Fork Lightning is great. And Venture Co. Mercenary, while a good card, uh, there are a lot of fives here, and we're not really looking for another. Before making this pick, uh, it's usually good to see the relevant cards that are affected by these cards. So Cobalt Geomancer affects Earthshock and Fork to Lightning, and that's it. So that's not enough of an impact. Undertaker, there's almost no Death Rattle in this uh, deck. There's that Harvest Golem. Uh, pretty much Undertaker usually sucks, so we are going to choose Anoitron, which is an alright 2-drop. Syringize as well with Dark Iron Dwarf and Lance Carrier, and protects the uh, Mookless Champions, perhaps. A good pickup. And this is a really nice last pick to tie things all together. The Thunder Bluff Valiant remains a strong pick, uh, but kind of as the same reason as Bloodlust. We have too many cards that do the same thing, and we wouldn't be able to play them all before we die generally. Uh, if it were going to that way, and usually we would have one by turn 7, uh, given we have three of the same, basically, type of card. So Thunder Bluff Valiant does lose uh, quite a few points. Uh, Target Dummy is not useful enough to do anything with. The Lightning Storm is one of the top rare picks for Shaman, and is a really good pick to round this out. Uh, this arena was looking to be... Uh, below average and also really risky of just dying before we got to play the five drops, but uh, the picks came near the end, and now it actually looks like a quite good deck. Uh, with the early game being held up by Rockbiter Weapon, Worgen Infiltrator, Anoyatron, Lance Carrier, Mech Warper, two Totem Golems, and a Youthful Brewmaster, that's even more two drops, uh, more early game than I thought. We were like dangerously low on it and then we got into like a little bit more than I want so one of these could uh, probably best would have been one of these became a four drop uh, not very many four drops were offered in this arena uh, the three drop slot is high quality of Scarlet Crusader, Harvest Golem, and Feral Spirit and Silverhand Region uh, Lightning Storm isn't a three drop generally uh, on the four drop side that's the weak part of the deck, but we did pick up Fireguard Destroyer near the end, Dark Iron Dwarf near the end, and a Hungry Dragon. The Mogushin Warden's uh, a weak part of the deck, but still with uh, still with Lance Carrier and Dark Iron Dwarf and uh, the buffs of 
Mookless champion, Mogushin Warden might do something uh, better than whatever it was up against, I'm sure. Uh, the five drop slot is very strong in this deck with Pit Fighter, Silver Hand Knight, Spectral Knight, Stranglethorn Tiger, Thunder Bluff Valiant, and Silver Hand Regent plus Totem. And the six drop slot uh, is quite strong Sunwalker and Master Jouster. No Fire Elementals, no Hexes, but that's okay. Uh, and no huge cards, but that's also okay because the Mookless Champion basically counts as a huge card. This is like a 7-drop. So I have two 7-drops, uh, three 7-drops with Thunder Bluff Valiant also. Uh, no card draw in this deck, but it's generally going to follow the same theme of just fight hard for board control. Once you get even a bit of board control, if you get to turn 7 and your opponent has no board, you can play the Mookless Champion in Hero Power, you can play the Thunder Bluff Valiant in Hero Power, and then perhaps that'll carry it through. Uh, I really like this setup, I think it's a very solid deck, and uh, just generally above average. card that would have uh, tied all of this together really nicely would be something like a Cult Master, or, or just a strong 4-drop, like a Yeti, to push the uh, early game advantage more. But it's good. I think this arena was above average, it has a great curve. I'm going to guess uh, 10.